All right. Great. Uh, okay. My name is Pooja, and I'll be taking you through the fundamentals of reading comprehension. What exactly do you mean when you say comprehension? What, why is it important for us? And how do we address this particular aspect of the CSAT examination? Before I begin, um, just a quick background in terms of all of you. So what are you guys doing currently? Are you working? Are you studying? Have, is this your first attempt? Have you attempted uh, a few papers or a few mocks or a few past year papers? What's your comfort level with the exam per se? So anyone can start really? So for, let's just, let's just, are you guys all based in Delhi or are you from all over the country? Frankfurt, all right. All right. Okay. Oh, okay. Impressive. All right. Okay. Okay. Wow. I have a truly pan India representation. Glad to know that. And so some of you have said that this is your first attempt. Is this the case for everyone? Is this the first time you're attempting uh, the civil services examination? Okay. Okay. Good afternoon, Vaishnavi. All right, so for the most of you, it's, it's, your, it's your first attempt. And some of you are working. Some of your students, is, is that how it is? Okay, so in college. Okay, okay, so largely college based program. Hmm. Okay. All right. And okay, so why civil services? Apart from the aspirational value that it holds for almost the entire country it's one of the most i think it is if i had to be a bit biased it is the most prestigious career opportunity that one could ever aspire to so good so i'm extremely proud of all of you for wishing to be a part of this elite group but any personal reason And how, since most of you are in college, my assumption would be that you are still in the practice of study, let's call it that. So I'm sure you have your college assignments and classes and exams, so you're in the groove of things, if I were to put it that way. All right. And then, um, do you guys enjoy, so what do, what do you guys enjoy doing apart from preparing for this examination? I'm not sure whether you enjoy doing that, but let's assume that you enjoy doing that. Apart from that, what are, what are your interests? What are your hobbies? What, what, how do you like to spend your free time if you get any?
staying with friends. Okay. So hanging out with friends, chilling. Practicing yoga, that's a very good. All right. Spending time with your family, interesting. Binge watching movies, okay, great. And what kind of movies are these? A mix of Bollywood and Hollywood and boys cinema, or do you have a preference? Listening to songs, all right. Wow. That's very impressive, Pranti. And must be challenging, managing so many things, trying to balance so many different aspects. Well done. Kudos. All right. And uh, do we enjoy reading? And when I say reading, I do not mean uh, reading for a particular purpose, but just leisurely reading. So probably books, novels, or online articles, or blogs, or newspaper articles, or stuff like that. Okay. Okay. And so what's everyone's favorite book, or what's the last thing that you guys read? Again from the perspective of reading for pleasure. Hmm. Both very interesting both works, but guys and next, okay? All right. Wings of Fire, very inspiring read. You must stand for long, all right, the reverse travel, okay, okay, good, good. Right. Now, the exam that you are planning to appear for, apart from being Pride and Prejudice, Jane, all of Jane Austen's work happen, works happen to be a personal favorite, Ankita, so I hope you enjoyed it. Now, this examination that you wish to appear for and the examination that you are preparing for, requires a lot of things actually. The element that we'll be focusing on is what is termed overall as reading comprehension. This is a very broad overarching term that incorporates various elements. There are certain fundamental aspects to it that cannot be ignored. One of them is an understanding of the conventions of the language that you will be writing the exam in, so grammar. Another very important part is vocabulary. A third part is a basic understanding of the structure of, of the language. So as a reader, I should be able to ascertain when a piece of writing is what it appears to be or when it is becoming metaphorical or when is there an element of sarcasm or satire present in that writing, that element of discretion and nuanced understanding is required. And then we come to the aspect and all of these along with certain other elements combine to contribute to comprehending a piece of writing. So there's something, so we read information. So probably when we're reading, let's say a newspaper article, or, or, or uh, brushing up on our, on our daily GK, what we're essentially doing is taking in information. So there's something about some policy that is written or some decision of the government or some some numbers are presented and we just take those in. There's not really a very strong aspect of in-depth analysis or, or you know debate or deconstruction. That's one level of reading. The level of reading and understanding that is expected from a civil servant aspirant is of a much higher degree. Right, Your, the expectation from you all is that not only will you be able to analyze, at firstly understand the given piece of information at a superficial level, you should also be able to deconstruct it, analyze it, and 
identify the underlying structures that govern the argument. Right. And when you reach that level of ability, that's when that is only that is only when we can claim that all right, I have a, a reasonable level of mastery over comprehension. I can actually it's almost as if I am holding a debate with the writer. So so the ability of the skill to critically look at any piece of information, objectively analyze it in the in the context and the scenario in which it is presented to you. And then again arrive at unbiased, unprejudiced inferences. This is a skill that is required not only with respect to clearing the exam, which is of course our primary agenda, it is also required when you will go on to actually become civil servants and start working in this field. I know a lot of it will be bureaucracy and a lot of it will be following the rules. Oh, okay. Now is it better, Prakti? Okay. So, a lot of it will be uh, following the rules or following whatever you are asked to do, or but a lot of it will also be interpreting the rules, interpreting the policies, implementing the written word. So this skill that we'll be working on, what we term as comprehension, is not only required for a particular for this examination, it is also a skill that you will have to imbibe and enhance if you wish to do well in your chosen profession. Alright. Okay. Now the CSAT exam I, this was introduced, I think, somewhere in 2011. It was, it's a rather recent edition, if we were to call it that. It's been 10 years now, but let's call it recent. I'm sure all of you, have you, have you taken a look, look at any past year CSAT paper or a sample paper or anything of that sort? Has anyone seen a CSAT paper? last year's or the one before that yeah so if you've seen the paper i'm sure you realize that it's a mix of base uh, a test on certain skills right so there's comprehension there's reasoning ability there's decision making also there's interpersonal skills also and there's quant uh, there's analytical reasoning and quantitative abilities right so there are a set of skills that you get tested on. Of, so in total, I believe you have 80 odd questions. You get two hours to solve them. And of these, approximately 25 to 30 are purely comprehension based. So that means a pro, around 30 to 35 percent of your paper is comprehension driven. Right. Now, this exam in, in its essential nature is of a qualifying type so you need to score 33 percent that makes it what 60 66 something of that sort of, yeah so you're you're expected to score that much 66 right so even if the idea is to simply qualify this paper even then we cannot really afford to ignore the comprehension section because that's a major chunk of the paper that you are writing which is why it becomes important that we practice and we focus on the relevant aspects while practicing usually there are so and one thing that i thought i think is a little actually a little difficult is that the number of passages even though the passages are very small the short passages but the number of passages is also approximately, like in total, I think you get 20 or passages, if not more. Now, 20 passages for answering 25 questions or 30 questions is a bit too much. Usually, if you look at 
other entrance examinations you normally have one passage of a reasonable length and then you get four or five odd questions on that passage now that's an advantage and a disadvantage the the advantage is that if i understood if i read the passage once and understood it then there is a chance that out of these five questions if i do not get all five correct i'd probably get three or four correct so one one read of the passage ensures that my uh, the number of responses that i get correct goes up a disadvantage is that if i do not understand the passage then there are chances that i might not get five questions so one thing that works in a <clears throat> sorry that works in a favor in a csat exam is that the passages are very short and they usually have one or two questions per passage so even if there's a passage that i do not really get i can probably consider leaving that because you have negative marking also so you don't really want to put yourself in a situation where you end up losing too many marks right <laughs> the disadvantage is that in order to answer 20 25 questions i need to read 20 separate passages given the time constraint given the fact that i have other questions also to attempt this becomes a little challenging no matter how short a passage i will have to read it i will have to understand it because the questions are not all factual in nature the questions are largely inference driven when you when i say inference driven questions what i mean is that the questions do not ask you details about information that is already stated in the passage the questions will ask you elements or details that require some sort of analysis some sort of comprehension some sort of uh application of your ability in terms of deconstructing analyzing and objectively looking at that passage so now i have to do that for 20 different passages right so it has its pros it has its cons it's it's an established pattern that we can do nothing about the only thing that we can work on is our skill set and that is what we'll try to do okay now so let's start with the basics an understanding of grammar the basic conventions of grammar important from the perspective of the exam from from a long term perspective also nobody is going to ask you to write the rules of grammar but if i do not understand the fundamentals the syntax that makes up a language i cannot really hope to understand the meaning of that language language usage all right so that's one thing that i would recommend i don't i don't expect you to and i don't want you to waste time on picking up a book and revising fundamentals of grammar but once when you are whenever you are reading something whenever you are practicing something whenever you are watching something it could be a, it could be a movie it could be a netflix show it could be anything pay attention to the way information is being conveyed and an emotion is being expressed you might find a usage you might find an expression you might find a way of expression that that you would not have come across before right so do that one thing that does require a little more conscious focus is vocabulary if i do not understand the meaning of a word i cannot really hope to understand the meaning of the sentence there is a chance that either i will misinterpret the sentence or i will misinterpret the intent of that sentence or i will miss out on a nuance or i will miss out on a tone so consciously working on building your vocabulary might be a good idea it will be very helpful not only in comprehension but in other elements also all right now a lot of times and i get a lot of this that i you know i i have decided that i will read one page of the dictionary every day or i will learn 50 words every day frankly they might work for this might work for you it has never worked for me trying to learn words in isolation trying to just 
memorize one meaning of a word doesn't work i will get either bored or i will lose interest or i will forget i can only claim to know a word i can only say that already yeah i know this word when i understand the different context in which that word can be used the different meanings the word might have the nuances of its synonyms so let's take an example um happy right a simple word can you guys give me synonyms or words that are similar or that convey the same emotion as happy glad okay gay joyous be glad cheerful joy all right exuberance very good gaiety very good jolly yes contented all right great ecstasy very good cheerful right now if you look at it all the words that you've given me you could actually put them on a scale so at one end of the scale would be words like contented or satisfied and on the other end of the scale would be words like ecstatic exuberant exaltation and in between you would have cheerful and jolly and glad and right now all of them if you look at it convey a sense of happiness right but can i use exuberant in place of contented if i am using it in a sentence or if i'm using it to express something can the word exuberant replace content or satisfied or even joy for that matter no why because there is a difference of degree right exuberant exultant ecstatic gaiety all of them convey a sense of intense almost militant joy right very strong emotion of happiness whereas words like contented satisfied at peace glad they convey a more calmer sense of happiness where you are happy but it is not something that you're shouting about from rooftops there is an there is an inherent sense of calmness and peace in these expressions then you have words like merry joyful cheerful somewhere in the middle of the range a simple word like happy and we if if you were to actually try and look up synonyms of the word happy you probably come across if not more than that at least i think not less than 50 or 60 and the funny thing would be that not one of them acts as an absolute replacement for the other there are contexts in which one can be used and the other cannot so the do they would work as close matches they would not really work as close synonyms similarly if you would look up antonyms of the word happy again you'd find a range then you'd probably find idioms with certain words out of this list you probably find phrasal verbs with words out of this list you might find that there are certain conventional usages certain words will only take certain prepositions 
only when i understand this entire universe surrounding a word can i say that i know this word that's the level of understanding that's the level of ease that's the level of comfort that we are aiming for when we say that it is important to build a good vocabulary reading is one part of the job it won't help to read more if i don't understand what i'm reading and that is where vocabulary comes in the so learning lists lists randomly simply googling googling a word and looking up the first meaning that comes up or learning dictionary pages every day is not something that i'd recommend what i would recommend is a very conscious interaction with whatever you are doing you could be watching the news you could be watching your favorite show on netflix you could be watching a movie you could be watching mm, a television series you could be reading an article you could be reading a blog you could be actually doing your college assignments you could be reading your textbooks anything that you are doing make sure that you are actively participating in that event so any new word that you see any new expression that you see any new form of expression that you see it should register with you and then you should consciously research that word or expression or that formation does it sound too difficult to do does it sound like a very challenging or a very herculean task to do no response has everyone gone to sleep i know we pull the sounds a little um uh, it's very different from the way we are it's very different from the way we actually operate right now yeah it seems a bit overwhelming it seems a bit um like you know something like oh my god how am i going to do this right rather than rather than getting overwhelmed by uh, the task at hand let's try to break it down so like i asked in the beginning what is it that you enjoy doing so some of you enjoyed watching movies some of you enjoyed reading some of you enjoy hanging out with your family whatever be your area of interest i'm sure if it is something that interests me so like i like sports i like cricket can't play it love watching it so then i generally end up either watching um you know some series on on the game or i read a few biographies or an autobiography or elements or ask or excerpts or i read interviews with sports person or i try to keep myself abreast with what's happening in the sports in arena sounds like a, this is something we all would do right if i enjoy watching movies i probably keep myself aware of the the new movies that are coming out uh, the reviews that a movie got probably watch the interview of my favorite actor or female actor or uh, the director right or, or you know probably participate in online discussions about the movie sounds reasonable if i like reading then of course i'm reading something every time right if i if i am from someone who enjoys of just keeping myself aware you know up to date in terms of political so there are people who enjoy political knowledge and political debates so what probably watch the news or probably read editorial so so whatever we enjoy doing we try to uh, be a part of that world that that is that's reasonable that's a reasonable assumption for me to have for all of you <clears throat> all right so let's start from this. whatever is it that you enjoy doing whatever is it that you enjoy spending your free time with you should you can at least given that that might be a good starting point 
you can at least try and be a bit more involved in that so let's say if it is movies next time you are watching your favorite movie and if you if while hearing the dialogue you, you hear a word that you never heard before can you make note of that can you research that word if there if there's an idiom that was suddenly used or if there was a sarcastic comment that was that was there in that show or that movie can you make note of that and probably look it up a bit the fashion is what you enjoy next time you read an interview or are you reading a blog about the newest trends in jacket or whatever pay attention to the language used if if you come across a new word look that up that is is that that sounds like a reasonably possible starting point okay the idea is to become comfortable with various forms of expression the idea is to build our skill set to such an extent that no matter how the author expresses himself or herself no matter the language used the construction used we are at such a level of understanding and analysis that we can objectively and analytically we look at it and arrive at whatever the question asks us to do right so vocabulary important this might this might be a good this okay so let me let me give you guys an assignment you guys up for an assignment okay <clears throat> so as we discussed whatever are your area of whatever are your area of interest okay you will either read something about it or watch something about it and you will try and find a word that you think is difficult reasonably difficult and the next task you will bring it to the class all right now the catch is if i know the meaning of that word then what no practically we just we just trying to this figure out an assignment so whatever whatever you enjoy doing whatever is your area of interest you probably watch something about it read something about it and you'll try to find a word that you think the others in the class would not know and i would not know so a, a challenge is what now if you so you'll get the word to the class if the other members of the class figure out the meaning of the word and we are not allowed to cheat so can i expect this level of honesty from all of you all of you are mature college going students so i hope i hope i can hope that there is no cheating so we'll be very honest if we know the word if we know its meaning we'll share that with you if we do not know the meaning of the word and then if you me so even i if, even if i do not know the meaning of that word we'll admit it that all right this is a word that i've never heard before and then you get points and i'll i'll uh, so i'm in the habit of giving assignments small assignments at the end of every class right so we'll probably have a series of four or five assignments and the one who who has the highest points at the end of the series of assignments is declared the winner and we'll figure out some way to get some sort of prize to the winner sounds interesting okay so try and find a word that you think will be challenging and if the class and i cannot figure out the meaning of that word and if we do not know the meaning of that word and we will be honest in our responses then you win so i'll keep i'll keep tabs and at the end of five assignments whoever has the maximum points will be declared the overall winner and we'll get we'll get we we'll figure out some way to get across the prize to you 
okay now this is something that we can work towards there's an award there's a reward at the end of the road for your effort sounds like a good enough idea at least to begin with all right okay now first let's before uh, we look at different things let me try hmm can you guys read this passage and try and mark your answer there's a poll that is that has been launched so you can select the choice that you believe works the first just read this and mark your answer let me figure out All right. Hmm. Okay. The Health Index 2019, released by Niti Aayog, makes the important point that some states and union territories are doing better on health and well-being, even with a lower economic output, while others are not improving upon high standards. Some are actually slipping in their performance. In the assessment during 2017-18, a few large states presented dismal picture, reflecting the low priority their governments have accorded to health and human development since the IO produced its first ranking for 2016-16. The disparities are stark. Populous and politically important Uttar Pradesh brings up the rear of the overall health index with a low score of 28.61, while the national leader Kerala has scored 74.01. I guess that's the right. Okay, before we look at the question and the answer options, can someone tell me what is the main idea behind this passage? What is the conclusion of this passage? Why has the author written this paragraph? Uh, it is written to highlight the that. Some most of the states in India, they are not, uh, you know, uh, giving the kind of attention that the health sector deserves, and mm -hmm. the the larger states uh, which have better, uh, which should have, you know, which should have given the better attention as compared to the smaller states, they are the ones who are at the lowest, uh, you know, point. All right. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. What's your name? Vipul. Vipul. All right. Now Vipul. Good summarization. Two points. First, is the passage talking about 
the fact that all states are not doing well in terms of health in terms of the importance that is placed on health and development only some states some states is the passage or oh, second question is the passage making the point that all large states have failed to accord enough importance to health and human development again a few large states a few large states. why this becomes important people your summarization is perfectly correct what ha what happens and what happens with almost all of us is that we generalize the passage says one primary point that some states are doing better than the others and why is this that no any which way if you would have a ranking of all the states in a country some would do better than the others that's an obvious confusion so that's not why the author has written this passage what he or she finds surprising is that the ones who are doing better actually are economically lower or they have they have a poor poorer economic output so the assumption that the author has while writing this best passage and the assumption that all of us has is that if if the you're economically well to do if a state has more money it would be focusing more on the development of its people it would be investing more on the development of its people whereas this report the the conclusion that it arrives at is separate or is different from the assumption and that is why the author finds this worth mentioning right so the main so, okay why i ask this question any time you read anything we'll work more on this but as a starting point this is what 1 2 3 4 5 6 lines it's a small paragraph it won't even qualify as an entire passage any piece of writing that we come across it has a purpose there's a reason why somebody has written what they have written unless and until we are reading the ramblings of um a lunatic and maybe even that have maybe even those have a purpose but on an average any piece of writing has a purpose that author wishes to convey something to you it could be an opinion it could be just uh, an analysis of information it could be just uh, a description of or a narration of a series of events whatever it is there is a purpose behind the writing that purpose is what we term as the main idea or the theme of the passage everything else in that passage is in support now that support also could be provided in numerous ways but essentially everything else in that passage is in support of this main idea and it is not important that the main idea should be explicitly stated for you right now it is explicitly given the opening line itself says that some states are doing better than the others even they even though they have a lower economic output now the other pieces of information that are there in the passage are acting as information that reinforces this main point that there are some who are actually slipping so in some there are some who have actually done worse than early, earlier and then a few larger states which would obviously again the assumption is that they would obviously have a larger economic output they have actually they actually present a very poor picture and then the example of up and kerala is given in size up is huge kerala is small but look at the score that up has and the score that kerala has right now once i understand that okay this is the idea that is being conveyed and this is what the other pieces of information are doing in the passage then i will look at is there any word in the passage that you did not understand dismal disparity stark any other word any other a word that you thought that you could not really comprehend the meaning of anyone no judgments just ask it no one so everyone understood what the passage was about all right now look at now let's go to the question what is the question asking us today 
which one of the following is the most logical and rational inference that can be made from the above passage so the question is asking you for an inference so essentially pro most probably something that i can conclude based on the information provided that has to be consistent with the information given in the passage and has to stay within the realm of the information given in the passage next now let's look at the option the first option says the niti ayog health index data cannot be trusted completely nothing in the passage says that this data that has been re re released by the niti ayog is open to suspicion or doubt nothing says that had that been the case the author would have given me some piece of information or some opinion that how can this be true so this data should be rechecked or something like that stuff right now there is nothing in the passage that questions the validity of the data so option a cannot be my answer option b states the state government of the large states in india accorded due importance to the health index in their respective state actually the information that i have is contrary to this opinion it says that some large state actually present a poor picture and then the example of up is given so i can definitely not say that the largest states have accorded due importance to the health index in fact there are some that have not done it. so b is contrary to the facts presented in the passage <clears throat> He says economic output does not guarantee an improved health index. Now this is the correct inference because that is the reason the author has written the paragraph. That is the point he makes in the beginning that, irrespective of the economic output, there are states that actually have poorer economic output but have done more towards the health and well-being of their citizens. So the valid inference is that one is not the indicator of the other. just because you have a larger wealth portion would not necessarily mean that you would have more healthy and more developed citizens so option c is a correct answer option d says the central government should ensure that small states improve their health index figures frankly the central government is getting involved it should start by ensuring that the large states improve their health index figures because they have the money to do it then why are they not doing it is something that the central government should look into also there is nothing in the passage that suggests a remedy or a, or you know some sort of solution for the problem so i any which ways cannot infer this whether the central government should get involved whether the niti ayog itself should get involved whether the state government should or study the other state governments i don't know that nothing in the passage tells me that so the correct answer becomes option c everyone agrees everyone understands Right. Then, what is that?
Leaders of the 10 member association of Southeast Asian nations have resoundingly committed to conclude negotiations for the regional comprehensive economic partnership free trade agreement by the end of 2019. Some like the Malaysian prime minister went a step further suggesting that countries not ready to join the RCEP notably India but also Australia and New Zealand could join at a later date allowing a truncated 13 member RCEP to go ahead. Others insist that all 16 members must agree on the final document. It is clear that ASEAN, which first promoted the idea in 2012, is putting pressure on all stakeholders to complete the last mile negotiations. The ASEAN summit, which ended in Bangkok on Sunday, agreed to send a three member delegation to New Delhi to take forward the talks. Now, All right. Now, the main idea of this passage is that the leaders of this particular summit have committed to conclude negotiations for this agreement by the end of 2019. Now, there are different ways in which these people, some of them wish, wish to approach it. Some, like the Malaysian Prime Minister said that already if everyone is not willing to join, you can join at a later date. But in total, there are 15 members, three are not willing to join, so they can join later. The ones that have agreed, let's just go ahead with it and implement it. There are some that are saying, no, all 16 members should join. And we, we will work on closing negotiations, which is why there is uh, a team that is, sorry, there's a team that is, uh, that is planning to come to Delhi to take forward the talks. Right. Now, so far, this is clear. So you realize that there is a very strong commitment and a strong sense of urgency towards concluding this agreement. And the leaders, or especially the ones who are in favor of the agreement, are now taking measures to try and ensure that everyone is on board. The question asks you, the passage seems to imply that whenever you get a question on what is implied by the passage, uh, which of the following can be concluded from the passage, which of the following is the most logical um, conclusion or the logical inference, all of them are asking you to do the same thing. They are essentially asking you to analyze the information that has been given and then arrive at an option that is consistent with the given information in terms of ideas, structures, tone, and topic. Now, the first option says the RCEP should be completed shortly. Keep in mind that the question is asking you, the passage seems to imply. The question is not that <clears throat> which of the following can be factually inferred to be correct. There's a difference between these two questions. When, when, if a question is saying that which of the following is factually true, in that case, you need to select an option that is almost a verbatim repetition of the information given in the passage. Or if not a verbatim repetition, then then the then an absolute match in terms of the information presented. Right now, that's not what you're required to do. Your, the question says, the passage seems to imply, which means what is which of the following could I probably consider to be true based on the information given? Which of the following is most likely to occur based on the information? Right. Now, the one thing that is evident from the information is that the leaders of ASEAN 
are committed to closing this agreement and they are also committed to doing this at a very at, at a fast pace right therefore deadline they have they have a final end date in mind so it says that they have committed to conclude negotiations by the end of 2019 so they have a cut off date it's not like yeah we'll talk about it we'll see where it goes no they have a final cut off date in mind and now they are working towards doing whatever it is required to ensure that this date or this <clears throat> deadline is met so which of the following could more is most likely true in terms of this that the rcep should be completed short if there is a final date in mind and if they are taking steps to ensure that the stakeholders who are not on board till now efforts are made to conclude talks with these stakeholders as well which is why they're sending a delegation to delhi then the chances are that this treaty or this agreement should gain closure in a short time all right let's look at the other option the rcep might fail because india hasn't yet joined the rcep you know this is factually incorrect this cannot be implied by the passage because the passage actually gives information to the contrary firstly there are three countries that have not joined the rcep so far and secondly some members of the asean feel that if these three do not wish to join let's go ahead with the shortened form of the rcep so there is nothing to suggest that it might fail simply because india has not joined the third option says rcep will be instrumental in making india a superpower by 2020 nothing in the passage is talking about making anyone a superpower and these are strong words the rcep rcep will be instrumental instrumental means it will be crucial or it will be central so this is an important treaty in terms of the at least from the perspective of the asean nations we do not know how important it is in the larger context we do not know at the global platform where it stands we do not know whether india is a superpower or is about to be a superpower and this treaty is the one that will you know be the turning point again this is there is too much of extra information too much of extra uh, emphasis that is not supported by the passage option 4 says malaysia intends to lead the rcep dialogue process on the surface this might appear correct however there is again there is a problem with this the malaysian prime minister is actually suggesting that let's close the deal, uh, the treaty with the 13 nations who have accepted it he is actually not in favor of a dialogue he is saying these three we can join later so we'll keep talking to them let let let's finalize the deal so this one is actually factually wrong mm. the only option that follows from the given set of information is that this is a free agreement that should be keep in notice the fact that the first option does not say the rcep will be completed shortly that would have been a definitive statement and that would have become incorrect because that is claiming something to be an absolute truth which is not supported by the passage right now the option is more in the form of a hope or you know something that is probably likely to happen which is suggested by the tone of the passage so the correct answer becomes option a <clears throat> everyone agrees with this everyone understands this anyone has any doubts so far truncated is a shortened form of something so to truncate something is to uh, take a, a mini version of it or a smaller form of it so right now the what is being suggested that ideally the treaty should have 16 signatories but let's take the shortened form so let's take the uh, let's accept it with the signatures of 13 countries and the other three can probably join in later so something that is made short all right any anyone has any doubts in term with respect to anything we have discussed so far
All right. Then let's take a break for five minutes. It's four thirty-five by my watch. Let's take a break till four forty. So you guys get up, have some water, walk around a bit, check your phones, and then we reconnect. Try not to run away.
All right, let's assume. Hmm. Try and solve this one.
oh, ang pressure. The neglect of such a reliable primary care approach, even after so many decades, affects states such as Bihar, where much work needs to be done to reduce infant and neonatal mortality and low birth rate, and create specialist departments at district hospitals. Special attention is needed to shore up standards of primary care in Odisha, Madhya Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Rajasthan, Assam, and Jharkhand, which are the bottom of the scale as per the Niti Aayog assessment. <clears throat> The health index does not capture other related dimensions such as non-communicable diseases, infectious diseases, and mental health. It also does not get uniformly reliable data, especially from the growing private sector. What is clear is that state governments now have greater resources at their command under the new scheme of financial devotion, and in partnership with the center, they must use the funds to transform primary health care. So essentially, it appears to be a continuation of the initial passage. We will not take that into consideration. So, idea, the primary purpose behind this pass, this particular passage, is that states have a lot of <clears throat> resources available to them now, and they should be working with the center to ensure that primary healthcare services improve. Now, the question is very simple, actually. The primary healthcare sector in Assam is not up to the mark. This is this is mentioned in the passage. Certain states have been explicitly stated. Assam is one of them. And, they are, and it is said that they are at the bottom of the scale when it comes to primary healthcare. The passage also says that state governments have greater resources. So the second assumption also follows. The third assumption is actually negated by the passage. The health index reflects every form of disease. It actually says that it does not cover all the dimensions. Right? So only one and two work. Now, <clears throat> though this is a very easy question, you will get, you will find at times that there are certain assumptions built into the argument presented by the author. So if you remember the first passage that we did, it was evident that the author started with the assumption that states that are bigger in size or that have more economic resources would probably have done better on the health index. When he or she finds that that is not the case, they felt the need to explain this. Right. Now, what is an assumption, firstly? Any, as I said, any piece of writing is presented with an idea in mind. There is some purpose, some thought that the author wishes to convey. So he or she thought, okay, let me write about this. Now, in order to convey that thought or in order to reinforce that thought, the author will provide other pieces of information. Now, these pieces of information could be facts, could be opinions, could be data, could be anything. Whatever is given to us as a piece of information feeds to that main idea. There is a possibility that at times there might be certain elements that are left unsaid by the author. Probably because either the author felt that this is evident. I don't need to spell it out for you or because the author was hoping to get away with some uh, switch in judgment. Right. Now, let me give you an example. Okay. So, this is an example from better times when the world was not facing the scenario that it is facing. I went to a particular shop in my neighborhood and asked for a brand of cookies. So let's say, what's your favorite cookie brand? What kind of biscuits and cookies do you guys enjoy? So probably Britannia or... Okay. 
yeah that's that's the most that's the most common one so probably let's say i went and asked for a let's say i went and asked for a hide and seek biscuit it's one of my personal favorites so i'll i'll take that the sh uh, the the shop owner said oh i'm sorry i don't have that i was like okay now i uh, next day i'm talking to my sibling or to my friend and i was like see yesterday you know i went and they didn't even have such a commonly available biscuit and my friend says you know same thing happened to me i also went a few days ago and they didn't have this brand you know this shop never has this biscuit or this cookie what's the assumption in our communication so we were arrived at a conclusion that this particular brand of cookies are never available at this shop harish that is a given <clears throat> piece of information that this is a brand it could be any any brand right xyz so this brand's cookies are never available at this shop what's the assumption that we have made in our communication the premise the information that we offered was that i went to the shop the shopkeeper did not have it my friend went to the shop a couple of days ago the shopkeeper did not have this brand and based on this we are concluding that this brand is never available at this shop what's the assumption that we are making even when you don't go to the shop even at those times the brand is not available right good so close very close so the assumption is that these two instances i have two specific scenarios two specific cases where this brand was not available now these two cases or these two examples can serve as generalization for a common conclusion so this brand is never available at the shop it is possible that the guy did not receive the stock for this particular brand in the past two weeks or one week and probably if i go next week the brand will be available the assumption that i we are making in arriving at this conclusion is that what has happened once or twice is enough for us to conclude for every time you will find that almost all advertisements or a lot of pieces of communication or statistical generalizations make such assumptions that what is applicable in one scenario is applicable in another scenario that what is applicable to one set of population is applicable to the larger population and because of these assumptions the author tries to make his or her communication more valid or stronger but what happens if an assumption is disproven what happens if i go the next day to the shop and i find that the brand is available does then does my conclusion remain valid no it gets negated right so an assumption is anything that the author has left unsaid <clears throat> like like i said either because he or she thought that it is so evident i i don't need to spell it out for you or because the author is hoping to get away with some sort of you know switch or a generalization and he or she hopes that you won't notice it but an assumption is crucial in an argument so what what is an argument essentially any any piece of writing so this entire passage would be termed as an argument right an assumption is crucial for that argument to remain valid if i find that my assumption gets negated my argument falls apart i don't know whether you've seen this advertisement so there's this child who's refusing to drink milk 
and his mother adds a particular chocolate flavored powder into the milk and the child ends up happily drinking the milk and the ad concludes by saying that if you want your children to drink milk add this chocolate flavored powder what's the assumption that the advertiser has made in creating this advertisement the one crucial element which if, if it's which if it is found to be incorrect will make the entire ad irrelevant or invalid anyone product will enhance the taste for all i'm sorry i'm sorry a product will enhance the taste for everyone that's that that the advertiser says that if you add this chocolate powder milk the milk will become tasty and every child will drink it that's given that's not the assumption the author has made or the creator of the ad <clears throat> very good gotham correct yeah right there sir the assumption that the author the advertiser has made is that every child loves the flavor of chocolate what if we find that most children do not like the flavor of chocolate does the ad make sense then will the product work will the advertiser be successful no so either the advertiser should have come up with flavors different flavors so vanilla strawberry chocolate butterscotch and then said that you use this brand so the so then we would have said all right <clears throat> there is a variety there are options available right now he is pushing for a chocolate flavored powder saying that if you will add this your child will end up drinking the milk the assumption that the advertiser has made is that if not all then most children like the taste of chocolate however if we find that that is untrue if we find that most children do not like the taste of chocolate then there is no point in creating this advertisement then the message becomes irrelevant and so does the product so an assumption is crucial for an argument it's sort of a missing link between the given pieces of information and the conclusion or the main idea that the author is trying to arrive at all right okay Solve this first. Solve the sixth question. Meditation is the best known method for directing our thoughts towards the essential 
and training our perception. Buddhist monks, for example, practice meditation in order to free the spirit of all earthly ties and to open up new pathways to knowledge. The phenomena of controlled attention is not only used in Asian religions, but also in Western psychology. Anyone wishing to train his or her memory must begin by controlling perception. For example, if you find that you keep forgetting people's names, this is probably because you are easily distracted and do not attach enough importance to names when you are introduced. Even your creativity is influenced by how intensely you deal with the task at hand. If you need a new idea urgently, for example, an original birthday gift for a close friend, perhaps you should let yourself be inspired by the world around you. We often do not take the time to notice what is around us. The flash of inspiration you need will come if you allow your attention to float freely, touching on all possibilities, even ones you have disregarded. Right. Now, this passage is talking about meditation and it's talking about how med why meditation is important not only in a particular culture but overall right now the question the first question asks you the first paragraph of the passage mainly focuses on the first paragraph is actually the first two lines meditation is the best known method for directing our thoughts towards the sensations and training our perception buddhist monks for example practice meditation in order to free the spirit of all earthly ties and to open up new pathways to knowledge. The first option says the importance of directing our thoughts. Is the first paragraph telling you why is it important to direct our thoughts? Why we should be doing this? Why we need to train our perception? Why we need to channel our thoughts? Is the first paragraph telling me that? No. A, a tangential reference to this comes in the third and the fourth paragraph. Why this would be helpful? Because it would not only help you in tasks as mundane as remembering people's names, it would also build your creativity. The first paragraph is focused, is telling you why is it important to meditate. That it will help you focus your thoughts and train your perception. And Buddhist monks actually practice it to free the spirit of all earthly ties. So why is it important to meditate? Because this is, this is what it will help you do. Why you should be doing this in the first place is not what the passage is about or the paragraph is about. So option A is incorrect. Option B is the instance that is provided to reinforce this point. So option B is also wrong. Option C is the correct answer. The importance of meditation. And D says. <coughs> sorry. D says the practice of meditation to free the spirit of all earth. Again. That's not why the first paragraph has been. It's essentially to tell you. That this is an important thing to do. All right. Now, why do, okay, the next question, seventh one, quickly mark your answer. Correct. Why do Buddhists, in order to free the spirit of all earthly ties, to open up new? Now, this is a factual question. This is a fact-based question. Both of these are mentioned in the in these lines. So, the correct answer is option C. All right. Hmm. Read this one. This is a slightly longer passage. But I don't think you'd probably get such long passages. But it would help us build our comprehension. So let's read this one. And then we'll take a look at a couple of questions.
tell me when you have finished reading. All right, everyone's done reading. The eighth question. If you want me to go back to the passage, that actually this question does not require. Going back to the passage. Now the question says, <clears throat> why is salt crucial for health? The question is framed in a positive way. Why is salt important for health? It leads to hypertension. It increases the chances of stroke. It harms the nerve function. These are all negative effects of salt consumption. So these will not make salt important for health. The only option that can work is the second option. It regulates blood pressure. So that's one of the regulating or the more important functions that is performed. The other three highlight the negative effects of salt. So that cannot be the answer. All right, now for the ninth question, what should be the answer? If at any point you want me to go back to the passage, let me know. According to the passage, how will a reduction in salt intake benefit humans? It will assist muscle function. It will help them become more active. It will prevent premature death. The initial paragraphs talk about the fact that how even uh, how uh, hypertension results in approximately what 15,000 deaths. And if you reduce the salt intake, it will actually prevent people dying earlier. So, correct. Option C is the correct answer. Very good. Next question. Let's go back to the passage now. Yeah. When you want me to go back to the question, let me know. Oops, sorry. What does the word compelling mean in the context of the passage? Where does compelling come in the passage? Hmm. 
the number certainly offer compelling incentives to cut salt consumption but that's no easy task okay now normally compelling means something that very um something that irresistible either by virtue of being very interesting or being very or something that you cannot deny or something that you cannot refute right so something that is irresistibly convincing now here is where a nuanced understanding comes into the picture the question is asking you in the context of the passage in the context of the passage where this word comes the prior the paragraph preceding this word or the sentence refers to the research that has been done <coughs> that shows that even reducing your salt consumption by 1 gram can have several positive benefits and then this line says that this this data offers compelling evidence for cutting down salt it goes beyond simply influencing an influence is something that is a positive impact right so i am influenced by someone which means i am probably inspired by them or or i probably uh, am uh, you know kind of follow them influencing influential could work as a synonym for compelling but in this context it would not work because there is a nuance variation in the extent of influence suggested this is more in terms of a strong enough reason for doing something if you have such strong research which is suggesting something so unequivocally then you then it is it becomes more compelling it becomes more strong it becomes more forceful it becomes more powerful then you really don't have any point or you really don't have any uh, argument against it right so influential probably if you were given a general vocabulary question on synonyms for the word compelling influential might work but to, to compel someone is to go beyond influencing them it's actually to force someone not in a negative way but by by the strength of your argument by the veracity of your argument by the undeniability or by the attractiveness of what you are suggesting so compelling goes beyond influencing it is actually more forceful on its impact appealing definitely does not work here to compel is not to appeal to someone appealing is i have a choice or oh, i find this appealing or oh, i don't find this appealing right so that's more from the perspective of the person making the decision compelling or influencing for that matter are, are more from the perspective of the person or the information that is doing the act of that is performing the act of influence so appealing does not work attentive is contextually incorrect it doesn't any which way work as a synonym for compelling in any scenario so the between influential and force influential and forceful the better choice is forceful both contextually and even in terms of the actual meaning of the word but based on the context you will definitely have to go with forceful because the passage prior the paragraph prior to this sentence provides you strong evidence why it would be a good idea to cut down salt even as much as by 1 gram so the correct answer for this has to be option c do you guys agree do you guys understand which is why building vocabulary becomes important which is why looking at words out of a context don't, doesn't really work we need to be able to delineate the finer 
variations in the tones and the situations used. Everyone agrees with this? Everyone understands this? Yes, ma'am. Everyone. No one has any doubts. No one is not very convinced or no one would like to disagree or present a different perspective. Then, 11th question, quickly. This is again a fact-based question. The passage says that African Americans as a group, so if you look at the second paragraph as a group, African Americans tend to have higher blood pressure than the general population. So the group that is more susceptible to higher blood pressure, sorry, Zishan, I give the answer also, is African American. The third option. All right, the next question is again very easy. Which of the following have high sodium content? Fresh fruits and vegetables, any which ways do not have high sodium content. It's only processed foods, the ones that are the ones that are packaged, industry based, that are likely to have higher sodium content. So the correct answer for the twelfth question becomes option A. All right. Okay. Now, so in today's class, we have started working towards comprehension as a skill. So the first step or one of the parallel steps that you have to take is building up a vocabulary. Do you guys have an assignment for next week? Should I also get a word for you that I feel that you would not know the meaning of? Sure, sure ma'am. All right. Fine. Fair enough. Let's go. Okay, so you so you have an assignment. Recommend that you solve all of them. You guys have access to the sheet. You guys have this sheet available. Uh, Ma'am, uh, currently we don't, but it might get uploaded later. It does actually. Yeah, so yeah. I think with the, but as soon as the video gets uploaded, then you'd probably get the link to the sheet as well, also. So, yes, ma'am. All right, so you will practice the remaining passages, you will solve them, and then you will match your responses with the answer key given. If, if it's in accordance with the answer key, brilliant. If it's not, see where the disagreement happens. And if you're not convinced about the answer, the explanation that is provided, you'll bring your doubts to the next class and we'll take them up. All right. So beginning from now on, anything that you see, anything that you read, anything that you hear, no, not hear, actually, see or read, you will try to look at it and at least start by trying to identify what is the main idea behind this piece of communication. What is the main point? What's the conclusion that the author is trying to arrive at what's what's the central theme of this entire piece of writing all right so that might be a good starting point in the next class we'll work more towards getting inferences how do we arrive at inferences where what are the traps that we need to avoid what are the words that could probably help us eliminate choices quickly and we'll also start working towards building our reading speed we need to be able to attempt 80 questions within two hours, of which around 25 are going to be comprehension based. I need to read a passage and I need to look at options and solve it. So I need to be pretty good at it and quick at it. Okay, so this, so we'll work towards that. But in the meanwhile, Kusum, your sheet should be uploaded with the video. 
So just wait for some time. It, you should get access to it. All right. So you have your assignment for next week. You ask. You have to solve the sheet. And if you have any doubts, please bring them to the next class. All right. Everything that we have discussed till now in the class today was it clear? Did you guys understand? Um, some sense of clarity in terms of what is it that you're supposed to do? Do you, do you think you could use this as a base to build upon later? All right. Thank you so much, guys. Take care of yourself, all of you, in whichever part of the country that you are. Just be very careful. Take very good care of your health. And yeah, start practicing. Okay. Thank you, guys. Have a good day.